what you're about to see is truly as disturbing as it seems. I courageously recorded this in person during Black History Month in February 2020. Yes, that's correct. February 2020 is when these statements were made by the Dean of Social Work, Dean Scott Ryan. The meeting occurred after myself and another Black faculty member were berated and threatened to stop speaking up in faculty meetings about anti-Black racism. One of the requests we had was to simply do a culture and climate survey of the School of Social Work so we could document how frequent and to what degree of severity these occurrences were happening, not just to people who came forward, but to those who were scared into silence. Here's the response. Make sure you listen closely and share this with someone who you think might need to hear it. Be sure to be vigilant about documenting and spotlighting racism and sexism wherever it occurs. Mm -hmm. um, Some things to start with, they're not, you know, not done. It's an ongoing process of, ma of maintaining and communicating to ensure that as things come up, they're adequately addressed and we continue to, to move forward. So this is, even this is not an end, it is a continuation and kind of a beginning process, if you will, um, into the planning. Now that we've had three formal sessions, there was one on the ninth, which we all went to, and then there was one in the morning of the 24th and the afternoon of the 24th. Um, again, we wanted to hold these couple of sessions to be able to come together. This is not a, a business meeting per se. We're not passing things, we're not voting on things. Um, and so it's a it's an ongoing conversation, if you will. Okay. Um, to put this in context, um, we have a strategic plan. Although the strategic plan says that from 12 to 17, it's not like milk that goes bad. It's not like we're not a school of social work. We're not doing these things anymore. Um, and so we, we are continuing to work within these same general goals. And goal number three is to foster cultural professional development and mutual respect. Um, that strategic goal is focused on creating a positive culture for work and study, characterized by mutual respect and founded in openness, communication, and transparency. Ultimately, that's kind of what we're shooting for, and whether it was there or, or continuing on, that's that's the priority that we have as a school. Okay. Um, over the last year, we unanimously passed, support, and embraced the principles of community. Um, that was done by faculty and staff uh, separately, and that's that's the the tone and the stage for for what it is that we to do together. It's not, a, it's not a manual. It doesn't necessarily dictate behavior. It sets a, a, a tone and a culture of mutual respect and such that, we're, that we all uh, agree to, to abide by. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, we're all committed to supporting and celebrating the diversity of our faculty, staff, and students in all of its forms. Um, and so I think that's the, the, the bottom line piece that we are all here for that as social workers in school social work or as, as professionals and staff that, are, that know they're in school social work, this is what we're about. Um, thus far, uh, this year, 
the culture and climate uh, investment has been approximately $100,000 in faculty staff time, travel, and other things. Um, ultimately, we are a great place to work with good faculty and staff colleagues. Um, we hear that from, from many different, uh, many different uh, individuals, faculty and staff, talking to each other, um, talking in meetings and things like this. We are ultimately a good place to work. Um, we are, we care about it as social workers, um, but we also care about it because CSWE is our accrediting body also says kind of things that we need to do to make sure that we have uh, an environment that embraces diversity again in all of its forms, both in its explicit curriculum and in the implicit curriculum. So um, if we look at the EPOS, the uh, uh, Guiding Principles for Educational Standard, it says the implicit curriculum refers to the learning environment in which the explicit curriculum is presented. It is composed of the following elements, and the first one is the program's commitment to diversity. Um, it continues to mention that throughout, but there's a reason it's the first one, okay? And so we, we have a priority on that, and we've always had a priority on that, and we do it because we care about everybody. Okay? We care about the people who are here, we care about the faculty, staff, and the students, okay? All right. Um, this is the more, the more explicit one that's in the curriculum, all right? Uh, accreditation standard three. Uh, it says the program describes the specific continuous efforts it makes to provide a learning environment that models affirmation, respect, for diversity, and difference, and then goes on from, from there as well. But it's just to show that overall, you know, we live in an environment, a professional environment, that, that necessitates that we, we address and embrace these types of things. Um, St. Louis Group, some of you may, may know, may not know. Um, St. Louis Group, there are two main um, leadership groups for deans and directors in social work. One is NAD, which more people have probably heard of, that's the National Association of Social Work and Directors. And the St. Louis Group is a smaller group that's primarily those research institutions that, um, uh, that have come together for the last 20 or so years. We're a member of the St. Louis Group. Uh, the St. Louis Group has, they typically meet before SWER and then one time in the summer. So their summer session is going to focus on this. Uh, they had a few different topics come up, uh, and this one, leadership for racial equity, is, is the, the topic that was suggested. And the president of the St. Louis group wrote out to the members and said he hasn't seen this kind of consensus and enthusiasm for a meeting topic in his four years as president. Um, and that's because we're all grappling with these things as schools. We all care about it. It's permeated throughout the profession, and as we look at the environment that we live in, as we look at the political environment, as we look at the environment and changing in our, in our programs, it's something that's important that we need to address, and every program is, is in this uh, together. Um, going around on the listserv, there's a, a um, uh, different people sharing kind of where they're at in it. Some are earlier in the process, some are a little kind of mid-range, and some have actual plans and are actually doing some, some things already. Um, and they will be, sorry, they will be sharing these things. Um, and in sharing these things, uh, they're gonna have various sessions. And so far, these are some of the session topics or breakout groups, not a big group, so we break out small groups like five and six and such to discuss this kind of in a round robin when they meet. So um, again, I'm gonna be participating in this and we'll bring back and share various plans and things from those that are sharing them. There's a number of them that are. Uh, and hopefully that will help, again, spur um, discussion and things as we continue to go in this process and develop our own plans as well. Here at UT Arlington, um, I was uh, looking Yeah, can that be muted or something? It's kind of, it's kind of weird. Thanks. Um, um, here at UT Arlington, I was I've been doing some of the researching myself around some of these things and found the uh, AACU, American Association of Colleges and Universities, um, have what's called the Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation Campus Centers, um, and they look at. Yes, 
Um, they're looking to, they're looking to, uh, they partner with higher institutions to develop these sectors on campuses, uh, specifically to, to bring together teams to break down uh, the barriers and dismantle uh, the belief in the hierarchy of human value. Um, I emailed uh, Jean Hood and the provost uh, about possibly uh, participating with, with them and some of these kids on campus to send some people from social work to be part of the team to go through this process so they could come back and, and both here and in the university to address some of these. I sent them an email too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Jean said that the president she has uh, have discussed uh, creating something like this uh, as well. Um, she said that Harvard has a model and there's some others uh, that, that do too. And so uh, we're gonna set up a meeting to see uh, what's possible uh, for us and for the university as a whole. American Studies. Uh, some of you heard, not necessarily all of you. Um, obviously, we continue to partner with them in multiple ways, and we've been a significant supporter of them over the years. Um, we are working currently with them. Um, we've been talking about it for months, but had to go through processes of getting approved and whatever. Um, but we're looking to hire a jointly appointed non tenure track faculty member. Um, Jason wrote recently, he's trying, we're trying to establish a permanent link between the units uh, via the joint hire. They have one with um, criminology, criminal justice, then one with, with us, uh, and so we are, we are working with them to be able to, uh, to do that, and we're excited about that connection as well, which I think furthers uh, our commitment in that area. Okay. Okay. Um, conducting a survey, we've talked a little bit about that, all right? Um, one of the functions of my role as dean is, is the overall protection of the school of social work. Um, and in doing that, uh, it's, it's multi-level in what that is. Certainly to make sure that everybody here is, is working in a good environment and is safe and is doing all that, that needs to be done to make sure it's a productive, healthy, nurturing environment. Um, but also within that is to make sure that our, our reputation is protected the, and, and that uh, our, our business as a whole and, and such is protected. So um, I've consulted with the attorney, we've, we've worked with the president provost, and based on our conversations, uh, similar to a decision that was made when, as you know, Jason shared with the Center for African American Studies and uh, the task force, it was decided not to do a survey. It was recommended that we do not do a survey as well. Um, so we've asked before, and again, as we finish this, we can talk about it, what would we do differently if we conducted, conducted a survey? There are many ways of knowing, okay? Um, just as there are in discussions such as this, we can, we can hear and converse and have discussions on topics and concerns that we want to be able to address and then how we can address them. That doesn't necessarily have to be gathered via a survey. Um, surveys themselves are a snapshot in time. And if we look at staff turnover and new hires and everything else, you know, from one time to another, they're not necessarily comparable. Okay? Um, we've heard individuals talk about suffering and silence. A couple things, please. If anybody is experiencing anything um, uh, that they are uncomfortable with, uh, 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 racial, uh, gender, microaggressions, whatever it is, there are mechanisms. If you are not comfortable coming to me, there is HR. You can go and do that anonymously. You can do it confidentially. HR even has a hotline. And that hotline goes to a third party, and then they get it from the third party and are able to act upon it. So there are ways that if anybody is experiencing anything that they are uncomfortable with to currently and in place address this, because UTA as a whole cares about every single person, faculty and staff, and wants to make sure that 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 is addressed, 
Okay, so there are mechanisms already in place for that. Okay. Um, reputation, help or hurt. There's arguments on either side. There clearly are, and this is not a clear cut type of issue. It is, like I said, multifaceted, and people can have valid opinions on either side of, of it. To be clear. Um, my concern is that if we do something and it gets out and it shows that there's there's uh, points of concern uh, and with 150 people and such, there's going to be things here and there, no, no place is perfect, is that it could potentially hurt us. Um, and so this is an especially vulnerable time. When we look at budget issues, uh, when we look at, at the, having a new building in the legislature and donors and such as all, and competition in general, we used to be the monopoly in this area for many, many years, and um, now there's uh, Texas Women's University and UK, UNT have, have programs. TCU has a program, Carleton has programs. UT Tyler just entered into the fray with the program, um, and, and on and on, and then there's online programs. So it is much more competitive, and so when I look at that and I say, okay, what are the pros and cons, it's not that there's no pros, there, there are, we can get some information. But I look at the cons and go, we could get information in other methods that don't necessarily compromise or potentially put us in a difficult position. Um, and so I look and say, if something happened and we had a 1% decline in enrollment because of something happening, that's equivalent equally to two to three advisors or three or four administrative assistants or tenure track faculty or or not kind of track faculty, it has real world consequences. We don't have um, the type of situation that we have huge waiting lists for our applicants and such. We are a much more open kind of university in which we live and die by our enrollment and we live and die by our budget. And my concern is that um, if we do something that is, that, that potentially betray us in a, in a an unfavorable light in that way, that it's going to it's going to hurt us, um, and that's that, I mean that's ultimately my my concern, and I think uh, has been others as well. Yeah, it may not we may not agree. That's perfectly fair, um, but it is one. Wait, okay, oh. okay. So as a school, <laughs> just finishing up, if we look at visioning and kind of next steps within that, as a school, let's begin outlining concrete initiatives that we can implement to support our various commitments to achieving racial justice and environmental fairness overall. So given the climate in our country, we can become leaders in these areas of use your own things, okay? We don't not want to do things. It's how we do them and to what degree do we do them as, and moving forward. So what would our community look like if we had the power to make it any way we want it? Okay, so. Okay. Now. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. I hope you noticed the bold and impudent behavior displayed even when the Dean of Social Work knew that he was being recorded. Be true to yourself, stay unapologetically you, and remember the words of Maya Angelou that success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. Be well, take care of yourself and know that your life does indeed matter. No matter what, I'm gonna show up for us every single day fighting for that. I will not be silenced. I will not be threatened. Happy Black History Month.